Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here in the LGFA, and we're on another uh, Zoom call today. You're well used to these at this stage. And today's one is a very, very special one because uh, into our inboxes earlier this week came the news that a former player is uh, the new presenter of TG Carr's Pell Naman Bio uh, coverage, which will be coming to your screens very, very soon. And it's none other than today's guest, former Galway player Maura Nivrenon. Maura, how are you? Great, Jackie. Thanks very much for having me. Anytime. Very, very happy to have you on board. Um, so, how did all this come about? Congratulations. Um, well, I'm delighted. Um, I have to say I've, I've enjoyed every minute so far that I've had with uh, Titi Cahar and working with uh, Pelnaman Bill. Bill. And uh, it's just it's a brilliant honour to be able to help in broadcasting it and bringing it to people's homes, especially in the current climate. Um, I think there's a huge appetite out there for people to, to see the skill level. Um, and the players and, and everything they've worked towards to make this uh, championship happen. So I'm delighted to be a part of it and uh, looking forward to the matches very much. Very good. Um, you're a far uh, more proficient Gaelgord than I am. I have the Cúpla Fuckle and I did get a B, I think, in my Honours Irish in school, which wasn't too bad. So you have some nice uh, imagery there in the background. Uh, Imani, I can see, Pelador. Um, Maura, for, from your own, uh, can you tell me how your love of Irish uh, ca came about? Were you born into a, an Irish-speaking family or what was the, what was the uh, genesis from, for this? Uh, yeah, we're not from a Gaelic area, Jackie, but I suppose uh, my parents would always have been... Um, very into Irish culture and language and music was a big part in our house growing up, especially in sport in the same way. Um, my mother and father both speak Irish um, and English, so we would have had a mix of both. Um, my brothers would speak Irish and English as well. Um, probably more so when uh, they, you know, they're made to listen to me and they have to listen to it in Irish, but uh, they're well able to hold their own in a conversation. And uh, we've always had the, the couple of buckle at home, but I suppose I love the fact that you could express yourself in different ways. Um, I loved French in school as well. And I suppose I, I have the dream job of having sport and Irish uh, rolled into one. I don't feel like it's work. Um, I just, I love to talk and I love sport. So I, I'm getting the ideal mix of both. A marriage made in heaven, I have to say, Maura. And, uh, you know, you've been a fantastic analyst uh, over the past number of years on TG Carr on our coverage. And I love seeing you at the games and um, good banter that we have from time to time as well. Um, the step up from analyst to main presenter, Maura, what are your thoughts on that and, and what lies in store? Yeah, it's always different. I suppose the biggest thing that I would see is that, you know, you're always still trying to, to think like a player because that's really what people want to hear about at home. They want to, to see what it is, maybe the tactical changes on the pitch. Um, as a presenter, I suppose the difference is that you're leading the conversation more and you're, you're picking out, if you have 30 seconds, well, what's the key point that needs to be discussed? Um, and I suppose in, in challenging analysts as well to make sure that you're getting the most out of them. They have brilliant experience. Um, we have a, a star-studded lineup there with Michelle Ryan, Rena Buckley, Sarah Furlong, a uh, huge experience from the three counties as well. So it, it's really important with, with any analyst that as a presenter you're getting that from them. Um, but I think the main thing is to just keep on enjoying what we do because the, the standard of football is fantastic. The organisation that we have um, is amazing as well. And, and I think it's just something we're all looking forward to, to, to getting back out there on the sideline, seeing them on the pitch. Absolutely. Uh, Maura, how tempted will you be now when, when, when uh, you're discussing a, a pivotal piece of play or some tactical analysis and you, you hand over to Sorica or Michelle or Rena and they come back with a point and you're like, no, I think you're wrong. <laughs> how, how do you marry that with your new role? Well, I think there's always, look, there's always a healthy discussion there and there's always going to be two viewpoints. And, you know, we'd hope that, that everyone who's watching at home and that that has their own opinion as well, would, would feel that they're getting voiced as well. So, you know, while I'd be happy to ask the tough questions, I think it's important that if something can be picked up on um, as another point of view and maybe something to add on it, um, I would hope that we can add to that and give people, you know, a good discussion, show them that we're, we're there to, to make sure that they get the best out of the, the program that they're watching um, and that we, you know, analyse as best we can what's happening. But... We certainly can't predict the future, so if they're going to have to watch it to find out. <laughs> Absolutely. Maura, talk to me about your preparation for, uh, for match day and, and the Pelham on Bio coverage and, and what, what that entails and how far out during a week you're, you're getting your notes and your facts and your stats together. Yeah, I suppose um, it has always been, previously we've had the, the league campaign to help us and with the, the preparation in the league, it has always been something that you learn from the players, maybe what they're doing or different structures in the management the same preparation hasn't been there, I suppose, from the amount of matches we can look back on. Um, but normally, you would be in the weeks leading up to a game. You're making sure that you're, you're doing your own prep. Now, they're excellent with uh, Nemeshan. They have you know, excellent researchers there who help out so much to, to gather information together. 
uh, to make sure that it's accurate, you have availability of clips to make sure that you're, you're current and up with it. Um, but you're, you're watching to kind of hear player interviews, I suppose, as well. Um, significant things, Jackie, can happen. You need to be prepared that on the day there can be lots of changes where players may be injured, um, but possibly even just a tactical switch. So you need to know you cannot just have your, your 15 players and say, well, they're definitely the ones that are playing. Um, even if you have an inside line, anything can change on the day. But uh, like I said, I really enjoy doing it. And when you feel prepared with it, um, I'd like to think of a good work ethic. It comes through on the day that you're ready, you're prepared, um, and you're coming across as professional as you can. So, Mar, when you compare your playing days to where we are now, the tactical evolution of the game has been uh, quite phenomenal. I think we, every year it seems that managers are trying to outwit and outdo each other with new methods and, and new ways of play. Yeah, it's very true. And I suppose the team has increased in the backroom team as well, Jackie, which is a big thing where you have maybe more people involved in forwards, more people for backs, more goalkeeping coaches. And um, that has really helped to bring along the game. Another side that we see as well, the speed of the game is is constantly changing with maybe the, the skill level we would see and from clubs, what players can bring from their club into their county as well. Um, I love to see that link up of players in, in club, maybe where more Abbey would have been an example in Cork, there we would often have seen the link up Kilcarran, Clamburn and Galway, for example, um, really pushing it to the heights of club level and then kind of transferring that to county as well. Um, another big change I've seen is that maybe in management terms, we do see a bit more longevity there. And a lot of the time, there's more continuity. So maybe the panels are not changing as much. The management is not changing. And it does really create a great basis from year to year. They have that platform rather than maybe we would have sometimes seen a lot of changes from year to year. And it can be challenging to deal with that uh, as a player, but also as the management team. Absolutely. Um, how, how much do you think... Um uh, uh, coverage will, will be different in, in, in these unprecedented times that we're in and uh, a COVID, a hen, uh, a nucked, uh, as we'll call it. Uh, have I got that right, Mara? Uh, a hen, a knee. But yeah, a knee, well, a knee. Terrible. Have, terrible. Any time of the day or night. So I, I, I told you I had to work on my Irish, but we are in, in the year 2020 and we had the 20 by 20 campaign was in full swing as well. So we have lost some significant ground, but at the same time, we're looking forward to the games getting underway more. But from a from a coverage viewpoint, how different do you think uh, things will look? Well, I think uh, it has been wonderful with TG Carr and Nemeton. They have been able to stream the games. We've seen that from the GAA and the, I suppose the, the effort that have been made. It really doesn't come across as anything too different. We're still seeing a great standard. We're being presented with great analysis. Um, TG Carr have always been instrumental in kind of adding in something new. They're no strange mm, challenges. Absolutely. Like the first people to introduce the ref cam, for example, in production. Um, another example, I suppose people would say, well, it's tough to see how it changes, but online kind of we would see a lot of uh, interviews now with players after matches. TG Carr began that in Pelham on, uh, going onto the pitch and, you know, running on trying to follow a player um, who was ready to go celebrating. But I mean, you do get a raw interview from that. So while there might be a bit more of the distance from it, and obviously there are safety protocols to go through, I think we still will see, you know, the player interviews, the player of the match presentations. We will get to hear from the managers. Um, and while it'll be a little bit different, the, the basic bones that are there, Jackie, and we're really looking forward to, to presenting that to people at home so that they're getting in on the action um, and seeing that 2020 is the championship they hope it can be. Absolutely. As, as I said, I need to brush up on my Irish. I hooked an A, but it's a, a nucked is not a number, right? So let's clarify that one for us straight away. Uh, Maura, just looking at the bio that was sent through from the good people at um, TG Gahar and Nemeton. Nine years of age when you started kicking football with Milltown. Yeah, so um, thankfully I'm still playing with Milton and we had a bit of a, a club cut short, I suppose, like everybody around yes. the country with our matches. But uh, I'm very lucky and very proud to be part of the Milton Ladies Club. Um, we've had an excellent tradition of players all the way through. Um, we have some players who've been playing for, like myself, for over two decades um, and still happy to keep going with it and enjoying it. But um, it's a massive thing, Jackie, to play and grow up with people that when you go to school with them and when you leave, and I found, especially with college and starting to work, it keeps a brilliant link there with it. Um, we always had great managers and trainers to help us, uh, which again, by the time we got to secondary school, we had a great basis in football. Uh, I have five brothers, so I would have been practicing at home with football. If I didn't play football at home, um, <laughs> I'd be sitting there by myself doing nothing. So um, while I did obviously enjoy the, the extra practice, uh, there was no hiding in our house really. You, you had to get out there and play. But um, I'm very proud of the Milton Club. We have a fantastic committee behind us as well. and. Uh, while every club in rural areas can find it tough, you know, with numbers and struggling maybe for 
for fielding, sometimes for fixtures. Um, we're making our best effort at it and uh, we look forward to, to getting out in the blue and white as soon as we can again. We wish you well with all of that, Maura. Maura, can I ask you, you were obviously good at football, pretty good, um, as you, you made your way onto the inter-county uh, scene with Galway. When did you realise, uh, was there a point in your, in your life, uh, and maybe in your teenage years, where you said, you realised, yeah, I'm, I'm a bloody good footballer and, and I could actually make a career of this? Uh, I suppose I've always loved team sports. And I think if you start to see that you're, you're on a team that's winning, it helps your own confidence as well. Um, I always found, I suppose, that I, I'd be good at fielding the ball. I enjoy playing in midfield, but I found equally I could go in full back or full forward and, and catch the ball in the same way. Um, as we worked on maybe different drills through secondary school, uh, it was definitely it was a, a key part of our development as players there that we, we definitely we upgraded our skills like I didn't want to be a player that depended on being tall and be able to catch the mm. ball and say well that's my forte and hopefully the ball never comes along the ground and I have to bend to, to pick it up you know so you have to really push yourself maybe to to improve to it and um, for county training it was great to get the opportunity to go in and uh, with minor Lawrence at number 16 and minor and um, you know they were huge things from it so I suppose throughout secondary school I definitely saw that it was something I really wanted to, to keep doing and um, for our club we had a, a great core group of players that stayed together we won all Ireland sevens together and um, so that pushed us on together but uh, we had a, a fantastic group of players with the Galway set up and that camaraderie is, is super because no matter whether it's uh, start to present Pelham on bow or seeing them at a, a challenge match um, when we were all allowed and able to go to matches of course it was brilliant to, to have that catch up and you always have that connection so um, I think from that point of view, it helps you to continue to, to want to get better because you're playing with that calibre of players at that high standard. You mentioned Kilcar and Clonburn earlier in the conversation. Um, more of a phenomenal team. You, you talk about the Ward sisters, twins, who won TG Cahar All-Stars together last year, making a bit of history. Uh, they were the first set of twins since the Orions from Waterford way back. Um, you talk about uh, the Divilies as well. Lindsay Noon is a, is a rapidly up-and-coming uh, young player as well from the club. Um, Sarah Gormley's there. You know, the list goes on. Um, so from that point of view, and I'm going to ask you to put the Galway hat on now, right? Because obviously you've got a, a real affinity with your native county. Um, can Galway make that step uh, obviously they were very close last year and there was a cracking semi-final against Mayo and Roisin Leonard nailed that brilliant free off the ground which is, if they scored from a 45 this year it'll be worth two points um, can they go one step further and, and get their hands on on, uh, on Brendan? Yeah, I believe they can Jackie and I think everything comes in periods of development, you know you are mentioning the um, Louise and Nicola Ward there and I think sometimes it might only take one player, it might only take two, but there are clubs all around Galway there that are really pushing and have been Absolutely. pushing for the last five, six, seven years. And while it's difficult for those players and they may say, well, we're putting in all this effort and we still don't have Brendan Martin coming back over to Shannon with us. You know, I do think it, it takes time for these things to push into place. But also, I think the hunger that might be there this year after the experience at Pro Park last year, that a fantastic All-Ireland semi-final and a run-up to the All-Ireland. They did beat Dublin in the league um, which was something that other teams weren't able to do. And I think that will stand to them. While the league is different to the championship, every other little notch that you can have, a confidence of saying that you've won and you've beaten the team will help. And uh, the girls have been brilliant in staying together. They have a really good unit there that have gelled together well. And that's a huge thing in any game. When you're playing the running game like all we do, you need to have that consistency that you're not looking for uh, players to maybe be learning what the style is or the style of play. So... Um, I'd be really hopeful for it and uh, I really do think that the club set up in Galway has helped a lot to develop those players but um, they do want to bring home the silver for, uh, for Fanchi. And we have uh, the intermediate and junior grades as well to look forward to as well, Maura, um, with uh, the adult teams from those respective counties also more than playing their part in the 2020 championships. When you're looking at um, the, the, the flagship competition, which is the senior championship, and then you have um, the intermediate and junior as well. How conscious are you keeping abreast of developments in, in those other counties, particularly when it comes to the knockout stages and you're looking ahead to finals? Because I think arguably out of the three games at Crow Park last September, that the Mead uh, Tipperary intermediate final was probably the best in terms of, of, of a spectacle. Obviously, the rain hampered. Um, the senior game, but that overall breadth of knowledge, um, Maura, how big a challenge is that for you and, and the analysts to keep on top of, of most counties and what's happening there? Yeah, it's definitely a challenge, Jackie, but it's one, I suppose, that we're lucky when we can look at maybe the O'Connor Cup competitions and, you know, when yeah. you talk about the, the club championships, 
even for minor and underage, when you're following teams and you see, like for example, Saoirse Noonan when she broke on to the uh, the Cork senior team, what a player! She had been a player for the minors. You know, it wasn't that she'd never been heard of before. So, thankfully, players while they're new to that scene, they're technically not new to Pelham or to ladies football, and that does make a big difference. Um, the other thing that helps is you know you definitely can keep up even with local papers, local reports. They do help a lot, and PROs and county boards are extremely helpful in passing on information. But there's nothing like seeing them in action. So it's great in leading up to those big games when you do see the, the preliminary rounds, when you see the semi-finals, for example, you have a better idea of uh, the calibre of player that's there and what they're capable of doing. But um, the junior and the intermediate, they're brilliant stepping stones for those teams who are in development, for those teams who can show what they can do. Um, and when you win at Ireland, you know, anyone will tell you whatever grade you win in that, you put in huge effort to do mm. it. Um, and it's always a fantastic occasion with the... Uh, the performances that the teams put in so we're very much looking forward to, to all three grades yeah and absolutely and they are the adult representatives of each of their counties which is very important to remember as well on on, on the journey Maura 2011 the opportunity to begin working with Sport TG Cahar and Nemeton came in uh, 2011 but you've also can you also contribute elsewhere in the media Maura if you want to tell us a little bit about that yeah so again I suppose like I was saying at the beginning I've been very lucky where I've been able to uh, marry both loves that I have of sport and Irish into um, what people would say seems like work but to me I, I'm happy putting in the effort from it um, I really enjoy talking I really enjoy sport and and it just gives me that great opportunity to use my Gaelic for it um, on the radio it's been uh, particularly enjoyable as well it's a different side of it mm. uh, where you again you can use the information the analysis from it so um, I would contribute to regularly to um, uh, Sean Vaughan would have his programme on Red and Gaeltacha or um, some of the other sports uh, programmes and presenters that would have it. BBC Gaelga with the own Thea Blina. Uh, they run an excellent programme on Monday nights. Um, and also with News Talk, uh, Splunk is an Irish language programme yep. which has a, a sports segment to it. So I enjoy the variety of it. You, know, you meet with different people and I suppose it keeps you fresh as well. You were asking earlier about maybe research. It means that you have to know what you're talking about and you can't maybe just make it up and say, oh, they had a great game those people that played you know you need specific <laughs> people want to hear what happened if you call out the wrong score people are going to know that they didn't get three goals they got two yeah so it's important to be accurate and uh, i like that i think it's good to be to be tested and to push on from it so i'm, I'm happy to, to take those opportunities you, you mentioned the legend sean bon Brannock, and uh, i believe he gave you a little piece of advice that you've always taken with you more in your in your, in your career yeah, yeah, I definitely did. And um, look, when you when you look to, to people who you'd like to aspire to be like, you want somebody who's energetic, you want somebody who's passionate about what they do. Um, anybody who listens to commentary by Sean Vaughan, or if they uh, want to listen to how we spoke about Katie Taylor, Snaclea uh, Olympica, go back to 2010 and listen, uh, it will bring tears to anyone's eyes, whether they understood Gaelic or not. Um, but no, the advice he gave me was, again, very simply, I suppose, to to make sure that whoever you're talking about, that you're analysing the play, uh, that you're not just kind of nobby kahanus or an immerse, that you're not kind of insulting the player, you're not insulting a personal thing, but really kind of your job is to find out, well, why was something happened, why uh, that came about and what the reason for it was. And I've always found that that has challenged me to, to work as an analyst rather than to say what it is you see. It's very easy to say, well, that was a free, but where did it come from? Where was the pressure? How yeah. did that move to break down? And... Uh, I think it has, it has really improved and, and helped me to do my best at analysing the games. Mara, I guess when you look back earlier on in the year and when, when, when COVID first started to strike, um, did you have a fear at that time that we might not see any football in 2020? Yeah, I know definitely for club, we have had um, struggles with numbers and we've had a, a brilliant year of really an awful lot of girls um, putting their hands up and saying, I'm, I'm going to be there and I'll do it and I'll make the commitment. So... We were on to a great streak and uh, come February, we really felt got our training was off to a good start. We had our regular sessions in um, and unfortunately a whole, you know, a, a whole t got called to, to all of it, I suppose, for uh, all around the country. So definitely there was that fear there, Jackie, but I'd have to say, you know, number one is going to be people's health and safety. That's the priority. For sure. And you always bear that at the back of your mind. So whatever personal kind of disappointments or, or hopes you might have, the role is going to be overshadowed by hoping that people, you know, will be responsible, will do their their best kind of an, an, in terms of social distancing, mask wearing. We've all heard these messages from it and, and we only want to do that to, to make sure that we could be safe. And if as a bonus, we could play our football, superb. So I'm delighted that, uh, you know, Crave TG Cahar can go ahead and that we can see 2020. Um, but it has taken a lot of work and a huge amount of organisation. 
by the LGFA, by TG Cahir, um, and by all the players and clubs and counties. Yeah, we're very much looking forward to it getting underway. Maura, we'll be seeing plenty of you on our uh, screens uh, as uh, you front uh, Pelham on Bio or uh, TG Cahir. Very much looking forward to it, Maura. Maura, uh, how, for just to wrap up, how is life off the pitch away from the microphone and and football, how have you found everything and, 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 uh, and the work-life balance that you're, you're trying to manage as well? Um, I suppose I've always found that I, I'd be good multitasker, Jackie. Um, I've learned that skill, I think, from a, from a young age. So while it is busy, um, I'm very lucky. I teach with a wonderful staff yes. here in the school that I work in in Dublin. Um, I definitely have a great support at home, brilliant family, which makes a huge difference um, if there's ever any help that you need for something. Um, you know, their understanding if there are maybe times where you need to go to matches, to trainings. Um, it's, it's definitely, it's sports set up there is great. Um, it's difficult sometimes, I suppose, maybe there might be times where you feel you're, maybe the work balance is a, a bit overloaded. But um, as I said, when it's something you're enjoying, when you're putting your time into it, I'm happy to give it 100% and to, to keep pushing with it. So for the moment, Jackie, the, the work-life balance, it's, it's going well. And um, I'm hoping it's on the up now. We'll, we'll keep it going for 2020. Good. We'll talk to you in December about that work-life balance again, Mar. We'll see how you're fixed. <laughs> Mar, great catching up today. Uh, Berbua, August, um, Goramila Magot. Carmel Magazine. Come on, Jackie. Come on.